fictitious male names and male pronouns. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that like a name is fictitious, right? So trans people exist. Many people are saying that trans people exist, okay? Trans children also exist. Many people are saying this. Now, many people are also saying that trans children don't exist, right? Or that um, more accurately, trans children are being indoctrinated or uh, tricked by the, either their parents, if their parents are like normal, or by uh, you know the powers that be, right? It could be a, a teacher, for instance, that people accuse them of. And recently, this thing came up. Now, this was last week, and I've been wanting to go over this for a while. And I just want to show you guys, like, I think this is a, I don't know if this is a city council. I know he's addressing um, the Surgeon General, right? But this is the father of, his name is Wendell Perez. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is the father of a trans child, right? And I just want to show you guys how he reacts to his child coming out as, as trans. Or, or rather, I should say, the news that his child might be trans, right? I am going to play this video without comment. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I want you guys to pay close attention. Now, I'm going to be very careful with my wording here. Okay, so pay attention to what I'm saying. When you're watching this video, I don't want to tell you to not pay attention to the fact that his child is trans because that is very important and that should not be slid under the radar, right? It should not be forgotten about as you watch this. But I, more importantly, I want you to look at the messaging. Right. I want you to look at the what he's saying and how he's delivering his message and the kind of message that he's delivering. Pay attention to his verbiage. Pay attention to uh, the focal point of the message. Right. Pay attention to who he's centering in his message. Okay. Can you guys do that? You guys all all understand? Catch my drift. Okay. We're gonna get started. Bad idea. In January of uh, 2022. I went to um, my daughter's elementary school to deal with a very sensitive incident. My daughter attempted suicide by hanging in one of the school bats. Sorry, suicide warning. Sorry, suicide warning. If that is not your thing, uh, you may close the stream at this point. My wife and I were told that, uh, by the school counselor that it happened because of an ongoing issue with her gender identity. We were in shock because our daughter never showed any signs of questioning her biological sex. Um, we were told that they knew about the gender issue due to meetings they were having with our daughter behind our backs. We learned that during these meetings, our, daughter, uh, our daughter's confusion was affirmed and validated through the use of fictitious male names and male pronouns. Our daughter uh, was living a double life without our consent or knowledge. She was affirmed and socially transitioned in school. Due to the nature of the incident, uh, our daughter was Baker active and taken away from us um, with minimal contact for over a week until she was released uh, under our care. As a family, we had to pick up the pieces, uh, clean up the mess and start a period of painful healing. However, we decided as parents from the beginning that we were not going to affirm the, the, the dysphoria. Uh, we were not uh, going to validate the, a delusion contrary to uh, the recommendation from some professionals in the field. We provided, um, actually we did provide it, uh, unconditional support with proper mental health care and non-affirming therapy to our daughter. Underlying disorders like depression and anxiety were properly treated. We removed her from the school environment and placed her in homebound. We broke her back from her confusion. She is steadfast and sure of her gender and the suicidal ideation is gone. Th this semester, actually, she is ready to go back to the brick and mortar school setting. In summary, our daughter 
was suicidal when she was being affirmed. However, when she was brought back from that state of confusion, the suicidal ideation disappeared completely. Therefore, my daughter's case disproves the current narrative that the lives of children with gender dysphoria are in jeopardy if they do not get affirmed. If you validate one delusion, then what is next? Okay, so what did we learn? What did we notice from that? Now, I saw a few comments already. And from OAS, uh, he is putting his wishes over the child's health. It's a very good takeaway. It seems that Adric agrees. Adric says, your kid is trying to escape your bigoted ass shit. Insomniac Pen says, this guy's a bad father. So, I want to uh, hit on a few key points here, right? The reason that I told you guys, and it's probably obvious by this point, because a few of you have said it already. Again, I want to stress that when it comes to trans issues and it comes to this kind of transphobia, the parents of trans kids that you hear speaking up like this are centering themselves around the conversation, right? Notice, there is almost not a single word about how the child feels in any of this. Not a single one. It is a matter of whether or not the kid is suicidal, and that's it. That's about as deep as they go. Is the kid suicidal? Yes, bad. No, good. Right? And I'm sorry, but that's a pretty fucking low bar to set. To say that your child is no longer suicidal. Right? Don't get me wrong. If your kid's not suicidal, that's a very good thing. But that is like bare minimum, my friend. In fact, it's lower than bare minimum. If your child still has depression and anxiety, that's even lower than the bare minimum. Your child, at very bare minimum should be stable and mentally functioning stably, right? Hopefully without the depression and anxiety, or at least with a managed depression and anxiety, right? He's probably lying, to be honest. Oh, we're going to go over that. Don't worry. Kids hiding it from you, my dude. Yeah. So another thing that I want you to notice, where did he ever mention what the teacher actually did and said, right? All he said was that there were meetings going on behind his back, behind his back, right? It was, he was, it was very important. He was very pointed, that he was upset about it happening without his knowledge or consent, without his knowledge or consent, right? That was very important, that he was a part of that, right? Another uh, thing that I want you to notice, we were in shock. Here, I'll play this again. We're in shock because our daughter never showed any signs of questioning her biological sex. Okay, so this is a very common sentiment from transphobic parents that have trans children. Very common. And it's funny because, and I don't want to project this onto him. Let's take him at his word and say that he's absolutely correct, right? And he's never showed any signs. It is a trans son, a trans boy, okay? He is a boy. So his son never showed any signs of being trans, right? Let's just say, take him at his word. Even so, I would think that you would at least notice signs of distress, right? Some kind of inclination towards suicide, because suicide does not happen in a vacuum. Very, very, very extraordinarily rarely does it happen in a vacuum, you know? Another thing is, if the child is that confused, and the teacher is being that, like, torturous toward the child, right? Don't you think that the child would, like, want to seek refuge in their parents, you know? Like, or, or the parents would notice some kind of sign of abuse going on? You know, if they were really involved in their child's life, would they not notice like certain things happening? There was no evidence that he mentioned of any like lead up or, or anything of this happening. So clearly he seems disconnected at best to me from his child, right? Let's keep going. So we were told that they know about the gender issue here. Two meetings they were having with our daughter behind our backs. Okay. So we've gone over that part. Daughter's confusion was affirmed here. Let's, let's watch that again. We learned that during these meetings, our, daughter, uh, our daughter's confusion was affirmed and validated. Okay. Your daughter was affirmed and validated. And that is bad. Why? I failed to see why that's a bad thing. But, um, you know, we'll just leave that uh, out there in the open. Through the use of fictitious male names and male pronouns. Our fictitious male names and male pronouns. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that, like... A name is fictitious, right? Like, let's just say for all intents and purposes, like it was, it was Andrew, you know, Andrew was his name. Uh, wow. That was a Freudian slip. There's a reason that I said Andrew. 
Um, let, but let's just say that Andrew was his name, right? That's not a fictional name. And male pronouns are not fictional either. <laughs> They're just male pronouns. Our daughter uh, was living a double life without our consent. Yeah, without our consent. Or knowledge. Or knowledge. So, again, he is just very concerned about himself being a part of this. Parents like these get into a huge power trip once they see that their kid is doing okay on the outside while on the inside they're suffering. Parents don't always know what's best. Yes, correct. She was affirmed and socially transitioned in school. Due to the nature of the incident, uh, our daughter was a character and taken away from us um, with minimal contact for over a week. Now, this part is very important as well, okay? Taken away from us with minimal contact for over a week. Nowhere does he mention where the child was, what was going on with the child, whether the child was suffering, etc. Nothing. Not a not a single thing. The only thing was that he was it was his kid was away from him. That was his concern. Until she was released uh, under our care. As a family, we had to pick up the pieces, uh, clean up the mess, and start a period of painful healing. However, we decided as parents from the beginning that we were not going to affirm the, the, the dysphoria. Okay, so the first thing that they decided as a family is that they, no matter what, under zero circumstances, zero, are they going to affirm the dysphoria in their terms? Affirm his gender, right? Okay, so we want what's best for our kid, right? We want what's best for him, but we're definitely not going to, uh, you know, even before that, we're not going to affirm the dysphoria. We're not going to affirm his gender. We're going to keep calling him our daughter and, and say she, her, right? That's great. Awesome. Very loving and supportive parents for sure, right? Uh, we were not uh, going to validate the, a delusion contrary to uh, the recommendation from some professionals. Does this one even need an explanation? You're, you're really just going to come out and say it, huh? You're just going to go against the professional's advice. Okay, cool. Got it. In the field. We provided, um, actually we did provide it, uh, unconditional support uh, with proper mental health care and non-affirming therapy to our- uh, Read conversion therapy. They tortured him. Our daughter. Underlying disorders like depression and anxiety were properly treated. We remove her from the school environment and place her in homebound. They took him from the school and kept him under very close watch under their eyes. Took him from all of his friends, took him from all of his loving teachers who were just trying to do best by him and, uh, you know, decided, fuck them, actually, we, uh, you know, we, we're going to be selfish about this because we know what's best, I guess. We brought her back from her confusion. She is steadfast and sure of her gender and the suicidal ideation is gone. The, the so what I got from that statement is I don't think that it's gone. Now, this is just a personal interpretation, but I don't think that it's gone. There's this thing called masking, right? It is a defensive mechanism used by all kinds of people with all kinds of conditions and whatever. And one of them is if you are trans, and you are afraid of the ramifications, should you try to affirm your own gender, you will mask and you will do what your parents want you to because you do not want the suffering and the torture to continue. You will literally do and say anything to make the torture stop. That's how torture works, right? So I have a hard time believing, given that, you know, conversion therapy is literally torture, I have a hard time believing that any of this went away. It's just hidden under the surface. This semester, actually, she is ready to go back to the brick and mortar school setting. In summary, our daughter was suicidal when she was being affirmed. He was probably suicidal before that point. Isn't it a possibility that the suicidal ideation stemmed from knowing that the kid's parents wouldn't support them? And so when they were forced to act as the gender they aren't, which led to the parents showing support, the ideation went down. I mean, that's exactly what happened. That and probably bullying from other kids. But mostly, like, trans and gay people have a unique problem within uh, our system, right? Within especially religious households. 
a unique problem that is not experienced by many other minorities much of the time. And that is that they are denied by their own family based on their identity, right? It's a very personal, intricate problem, and it can be devastating. It can be devastating because those are the people who are supposed to protect you no matter what. They're supposed to be there for you and love you and, uh, you know, be, try to solve your problems with you, not constantly be battling against you at every single fucking turn when all you want to do is be yourself. It's torture, okay? It's a miserable existence. However, when she was brought back from that state of confusion, the suicidal ideation disappeared completely. Therefore, my daughter's case disproves the current narrative that the lives of children with gender dysphoria are in jeopardy if they do not get affirmed. If okay, this is the debate bro coming out in me. No, that does not prove that. But I think we all know that, hopefully. This is a case study. Even if, even if everything that he just said was 1,000% true, let's take him at his word, right? Everything that he just said is completely true. Uh, the teachers groomed him to be trans. The uh, dad was completely correct in bringing his trans son back and like turning him into his cis daughter or whatever the fuck you want to say. All of that just like was 1000% true. The suicidal ideation has gone, whatever. That still does not prove his broader point, okay? Because extraordinary amounts of data exist to the contrary of this case study, even if you were to take it at face value, which you would have to be very stupid to do. Do you validate one delusion then what is next? Okay. So I actually found the news article that was released back in, uh, I think it was January. This whole thing, yeah, it was back in January. This news article was released. This was released before even he uh, was releasing his name. He wanted to protect his daughter's identity uh, or his son. I'm sorry. Parents say school secretly met with daughter over being trans before her suicide attempt. I am going to read directly from the article. Otherwise, I will continue to fuck it up. So please forgive me. Okay. A lawsuit has been reportedly filed against the school district in Florida after parents say they discovered the school was, quote, secretly meeting, end quote, with their 12-year-old daughter over her, quote, gender identity. Okay. According to WJAX News, the lawsuit claims that the parents didn't learn about the alleged weekly meetings between the school's counselor and their daughter until after she tried to take her own life. The Child and Parental Rights Campaign filed a lawsuit against the school district on January 24th. The organization's president, Vernadette uh, Broyles, oh God, I don't, I, guys, guys, I, I don't think that color doesn't stress it enough. Let's go with, uh, I, I've, I've never read a more turf name than that. I've never in my life read a more turf na name than that. She's the final boss of turfs. That's it. That's, that is the final boss of turfs. Anyway, she said, it is a serious mental health decision that school personnel are not qualified, not competent, and not authorized to make, Broyles reportedly says. Parents must be involved in these important decisions. I think they should be involved. I think that would be good, generally speaking, if they're normal fucking parents. But, you know, these losers aren't. They're, uh, they're weirdos, okay? The news outlet also interviewed the father of the student involved, saying it withheld his name in an effort to protect his child's identity. We now know the name. It is Wendell Perez, okay? <clears throat> Clarifying statement. Do not find him, message him, dox him, whatever. Please don't. The father reportedly received news of his daughter's suicide attempt on January 5th. It was a nightmare for us, the father reportedly said, adding the guidance counselor claimed his daughter didn't want to talk about her gender identity with her parents due to their Catholic faith. Ah, there we go. Now, that's a good tad bit of info that we didn't know, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting that. I took offense because that had nothing to do with it. I mean, I don't even know if she understands our faith. Th that demonstrated she was ignorant about it. Our faith is one of unconditional love for our children. Hmm. If she didn't understand it, that kind of sounds like a you problem, buddy. That sounds like you failed her in that regard. Or him, rather. Okay? Sorry, it gets confusing. Why is this article misgendering him? I don't know. I, I, I know. I, I really am going to have a hard time reading it if I don't read verbatim. So I hope you understand. School leaders allegedly encouraged others to call the 12-year-old student a boy, along with giving her a new name, the lawsuit claims. Clay County Schools reportedly responded to the claims by saying it performed its own investigation and found the allegations to be invalid. We performed an investigation into these allegations and believe the statements made by this out-of-state organization invalid, Clay County Schools reportedly said in its statement. Well, there you go. There you go. The school district said, no, no, no. We went by protocol. 
okay? We did right by this child, so fuck you. Based. Speaking with WJAX News, the former Clay County School employee Richard Seriello claims to have worked for the school district for decades, and whenever a student would open up about their LGBTQ plus identity, he would share the information with school counselors. Over the years that I worked there, I did have students who would speak to me or imply that they were different from the other boys and girls, and I respected their privacy, Sariella reportedly says. The counselor would keep this information private, of course, unless the child chose to share that with the counselor and the family. A very good policy that protects people from abusive parents, right? An LGBTQ plus advocate, Manny Velasquez Paredes, tells WJAX News that it's important to protect the children's rights to speak with counselors in confidence. If the individual does not come out to their family, there is a reason for that. Vela- Velasquez Pere- Ugh, fuck, per- p- that name report- reportedly says, Vernadette Broyles, the aforementioned child and parental rights campaign president, disagrees, saying the lawsuit was filed in part to protect the rights of parents to be able to raise their children to direct the care of their child in accordance with their faith and without the interference of government officials. There again. There again, what do we have? Selfish. Selfish behavior, okay? That's all it is. It is selfish, controlling, manipulative behavior. Possessive. Children are objects to these people. And we need to start treating that like it's the case, because it is. All in all, right, I feel very sorry for this boy, this trans boy, okay? Uh, I do wish that this article had properly gendered him. This seems like kind of a neutral take on it. I think, I think honestly, this article did a good job of staying neutral, even while it was misgendering him. I think it's about the best we can hope for from liberal media, to be honest, at least, uh, you know, in, in the current day and age. But um, I do hope that this child ends up being okay. And they are going, he's going back to school this semester. And with everything that's happened recently in Florida, I'll be honest, uh, things are probably not going to look very good for him. I hope I'm wrong. I sincerely hope I'm wrong. But it's hell in Florida right now, guys. So honestly, uh, I hope the best. Okay, now to end this out, there was another good reason that I did the first video without commentary, okay? That is because there is another video that I also want to use as a palate cleanser. This is another father of a trans child. This video came out a while ago. You may remember it. I covered it on my YouTube channel. It was a long time ago. I think it was one of my first political videos, if not the very first. I'll just let it speak for itself. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, all right, that's you. Let me get up closer here. That's you. You. Watching on YouTube, okay? I encourage you to go back, rewatch the other dad, okay? All the way through, no commentary. And then compare it. Come back to this part of the video. I'll even timestamp it. Come back and compare it to this one. And I want you to notice who is being centered. The, who the father is putting at the center of the conversation. So without further ado. My name is Brandon Bulware, and Chairman, I'll go as quickly as I can. Uh, I'm a lifelong Missourian. I'm a business lawyer. I'm a Christian. I'm the son of a Methodist minister. I'm a husband. I'm the father of four kids, two boys, two girls, including a wonderful and beautiful transgender uh, daughter who uh, today happens to be her birthday. And uh, I chose to be here. She doesn't know that. She thinks I'm at work. One thing I often hear when transgender issues are discussed is, I don't get it. I don't understand. And I would expect some of you to have said that and feel the same way. I didn't get it either. Uh, For years, I didn't get it. For years, um, I would not let my daughter wear girl clothes. I did not let her play with girl toys. I forced my daughter to wear boy clothes and uh, get short haircuts, play on boys sports teams. Why did I do this? To protect my child. I did not want my daughter or her siblings to get teased. And truth be told, I did it to protect myself as well. I wanted to avoid those inevitable questions uh, as to why my child did not look and act like a boy. My child was miserable. I cannot overstate that. She was absolutely miserable, especially at school. No confidence, no friends, no laughter. I, and I, I honestly say this, I had a child who did not smile. We did that for years. We did that against the advice of teachers, therapists, and other experts. I remember the day everything changed for me. I'd gotten home from work and my daughter and her brother were in the front lawn. And uh, she had, my daughter had sneaked on one of her uh, older sister's play dresses. 
and they wanted to go across the street and play with the neighbor's kids. It was time for dinner. I said, come in. Uh, she asked, can she go across the street? I said, no. She, she asked me if she, if she went inside and put on boy clothes, could she then go across the street and play? And it, it's then that it hit me that my daughter was equating being good with being someone else. I was teaching her to deny who she is. As a parent, the one thing we cannot do, the one thing, is silence our child's spirit. And so on that day, my wife and I stopped silencing our child's spirit. The moment we allowed my daughter to be who she is, to grow her hair, to wear the clothes she wanted to wear, she was a different child. And I mean, it was immediate. It was a total transformation. I now have a confident, a smiling, a happy daughter. She plays on a girls' volleyball team. She has friendships. She's a kid. I came here today as a parent to share my story. I need you to understand that this language, if it becomes law, will have real effects on real people. It will affect my daughter. It will mean she cannot play on the girls' volleyball team or dance squad or tennis team. I ask you, please don't take that away from my daughter or the countless others like her who are out there. Let them have their childhoods. Let them be who they are. I ask you to vote against this legislation. Incredible stuff. Very heartwarming. Okay. I'll let that clip speak for itself. Now, I want to go over the two takeaways that I want to leave you guys with. Okay. The first one is, transphobic parents and really transphobes in general are constantly centering themselves around the conversation. Okay. Parents of trans children or parents that are afraid of their children being trans and they are afraid, which makes them literal transphobes, right? They're afraid of their children being trans. They are selfish in nature. They blatantly ignore the advice of healthcare professionals, uh, despite the overwhelming evidence that trans children need to be affirmed that they need to be allowed to choose their own identity for themselves. And it is a power tool. It is a manipulation technique to control the children as though it is, I I love saying this, control the children as though they are an extension of the parents, right? That's what it's all about. On the other hand, you have this dad from Missouri. He is a real dad. He is a dad who loves his children unconditionally. He knew that he made mistakes and he had the ability to introspect. And to understand those mistakes and why they were mistakes and why he needed to amend for them. And his entire rhetoric was focused only on his child, only on his child and his child's happiness and well being. It wasn't about his rights, it wasn't about what he wanted, it was about who his daughter was and what his daughter wanted. I'm very sad for Wendell Perez's son, his trans son, who will probably not have a a very good relationship with his parents moving forward, I would imagine. I would hope that they can change. I do uh, I do hold out hope that anybody can change, anybody can learn. But he doesn't strike me as the type. So the other takeaway that I want is people like Wendell Perez can make us pretty doomer-pilled, especially about conservatives and about Christians and et cetera. But this guy uh, from Missouri was a, you know, a Christian. He was just a normal, probably Republican voting uh, guy who went to his nine to five at the office Christian probably didn't know anything about trans issues, anything about trans people at all before his daughter. And he learned and he came to understand these issues. So there's hope out there, guys. There's hope. 